Hello everyone, this is Iran Talk and in this video I'd like to take a look at the Andrino ancestry harbored by ancient medieval and modern Iranians. In other words, the primary objective of this video is to determine the extent of Andrino ancestry in Iran, including Kurdish and Azerbaijani groups as well, even those living outside of Iran. So the primary purpose again of this video is to determine the Andrino ancestry harbored by ancient medieval and modern day Iranian populations. So what's different in this analysis compared to my previous analysis videos is that in this one I'll be using Andrino samples from Central Asia which are relatively unadmixed with foreign sources and are largely of European genetic stock. I will be using these samples from the sites of Dashti Kozi in Tajikistan and Kokcha in Uzbekistan. These samples were located in the Inner Asian Corridor in Central Asia and what's interesting here is because of this they avoided ancestry from BMAC from West Siberian hunter gatherer as well as from South Asian populations for the most part though they do have a tiny bit of this ancestry notably. It should also be noted that the ancestors of the Vedic Aryans and the Indo-Aryans originated in this region of Central Asia. So for this reason they did not have much BMAC ancestry. Nonetheless, the Iranics who migrated around migrated further west from this point and picked up BMAC ancestry as I've shown in many occasions. And for this reason they were a bit distinct from the Aryans who migrated to India. Another thing to note is that I am using unadmixed sources of foreign ancestry so overall these calculations are very raw and robust but they are nonetheless very accurate. So without further ado I would like to begin with this analysis. So here we have a very old map and this is approximately my previous hypothesis on the migration routes of the Aryans who migrated to Iran and India. Though nonetheless as you'll be able to see here the Indian Aryans avoided BMAC answer whereas the Iranian Aryans picked up significant amounts of it. So again this map overall highlights the migrations of the Andronoans into the BMAC culture and then into Iran and in the case of India avoiding the BMAC culture and then heading into the subcontinent. Nonetheless here you can see that the depiction is that there was a migration of Androno like people through BMAC into India but nonetheless as the next illustration here will show this uh, theory has now been falsified. Nonetheless the Aryan migration through BMAC into Iran still stands. So what this means is that the Indo-Aryans did not have much BMAC ancestry whereas the Iranian Aryans had significant amounts of it. Nonetheless, I will not take a look at the BMACized Iranics who migrated to Iran and their ancestral contribution to modern Iranians but rather my focus will primarily be on unadmixed Andrino contribution to modern day Iranians. So here we have another illustration and this was from Nara Simhan's uh, study in 2019. So you can see that the Aryans who migrated to India went through the inner Asian corridor which is interesting. So this is how they avoided ancestry from the BMAC culture and then migrated into South Asia which is quite interesting. So what this means is that this uh, population migrating into South Asia was largely purely of European descent. Nonetheless, the Aryans who migrated to Iran went through BMAC, picked up native Iranian farmer ancestry and then later established the great Median and Persian civilizations. So again this is a critical aspect of understanding the differences between the Vedic or Indo-Aryans and the Iranics. So the Andrino samples featured in this analysis were taken from this region from the Inner Asian Corridor specifically from the sites of Dashti, Kozi and Kokcha. So here we have the breakdowns for these uh, two uh, sample clusters. So there were more than one samples in each of these sets and they're from the Bronze Age. So you can see they're on average 17.1% Anatolia Neolithic, 1.0% Indian hunter gatherers, 72.4% Indo-European steppe. So this is both the Yam9 as well as the Kalmykian clusters of Yam9 heritage. Then you can see Iran Neolithic ancestry at 1.6%, Western hunter gatherer ancestry at 5.9% and West Siberian hunter gatherer ancestry at 2.0%. So these populations are ancestral to the Indo-Iranians and you can see that they are mostly of Indo-European steppe descent though again they have a bit of West Siberian hunter-gatherer ancestry, Iran Neolithic ancestry as well as Indian hunter-gatherer ancestry. So they are a bit distinct from the Aryans who resided in uh, Europe but nonetheless they are very close to them and they are mostly descended from them which again is interesting. So what these results prove is that on a genetic level the ancient uh, Bronze Age steppe populations from the Inner Asian Corridor were largely of European genetic stock and were mostly of steppe as well as Anatolian farmer descent. 
or are these results prove that the proto aryans from Central Asia, from the Inner Asian Corridor, were largely of European genetic stock with only minimal non European ancestry? So, up next, I'll be analyzing the genetic origins of the Iron Age Iranians from northwestern Iran. So, here we have the breakdowns for the Iron Age Iranians from the sites of Haji Firuz, from Dinka Tepe, from Hassan, as well as from Azerbaijan, from Shah Mahi. So, all of these are Iron Age Iranians. So as you can see here, their Iran calcolithic ancestry ranges from 62.2 to 79%. Their Andrano ancestry ranges from 17 to 28.2%. Their Indian hunter-gatherer ancestry peaks at 1.6%. Their Natufian ancestry only appears in one of the samples at 4.8%. Their Caucasian hunter-gatherer ancestry only appears in the Shamaki sample at 7.2%. And finally, Neolithic Eastern ancestry also only appears in the Shamaki sample at 1%. So overall, what these results indicate is that the Iron Age Iranians were mostly of Iran calcolithic descent, though despite this, they had a significant amount of Andrano ancestry at around 20%, though it is elevated in the Shah Maki sample at 28.2%. Now what you'll be able to see here is that later on in this analysis, modern Iranians are actually very close genetically to these Iron Age Iranians. It is also worth noting that the Andronova populations were likely not ancestral to these Iron Age Iranians and they probably got most of their steps from a Yam9 catacomb source. So that's interesting. So the Andronova source is just a proxy for step ancestry in these populations. And again, it should be noted that it likely is not ancestral to these Iron Age Iranians. So here are the distances for the Iron Age Iranians. So you can see that uh, for the most part they're less than two in two of the samples but in the iron age sample from haji fruit it's at 2.28 percent and in the shah maki sample it's at 3.53 percent so what this means is that in contrast to androno heritage these samples likely had ancestry from a catacomb source so if i likely use the catacomb step source the fits would be much better again what you'll see later on in this analysis is that these iron age iranians largely resemble modern day iranians what is interesting to note here is that in the samples from Iran, you can also see tiny amounts of Indian hunter-gatherer and Natufian ancestry. So what this means is that this sort of ancestry was part of the Iranian genome even during the Iron Age. Moving on, we have the breakdowns for the Hassanu and Dinka Tepe samples, which had the most Iranian plateau profile. So I looked through these samples, and the samples with the most Iranian profile, I averaged them out and I created these two averages. So you can see their Iran calcolithic ancestry ranges from 76.8 to 78.4%. Their Androno ancestry ranges from 19.4 to 20.8%. Then you can also see tiny amounts of ancestry deriving from an Indian hunter-gatherer so ranging from 0.8 to 2% and around 1.8% Natufian ancestry. So what these results indicate is that on a genetic level, the Iron Age Iranians with the most Iranian plateau profile are very much akin to modern Iranians as you will see in my analysis. And again, you can see that they harbor ancestry which is also found in modern Iranians as you'll be able to see here. So moving on, we have the fits for these models and you can see they're excellent, they're below two. And what this means is that these models are excellent and sound. So yeah, that's pretty much it for my analysis on the ancient Iron Age Iranians. Up next, I'll be taking a look at the medieval Iranian samples we have. So here are the breakdowns for the medieval Iranians. So one of them is a Iranian from Mongolia and another is a Kurd from the medieval era from the sites of Ganjdara from the early modern period. Sorry about that. So you can see their on calcolithic ancestry ranges from 58% to 71.8%. Their Andrano ancestry ranges from 23.4 to 28.2%. Then you can see minimal Neolithic East Asian ancestry ranging from 1.6 to 3.6%. Also, you can see a bit of Natufian ancestry here, which does not exceed more than 2.4% in the Kurd from the medieval era. And finally, you can see a bit of Indian hunter-gatherer ancestry here, which does not exceed more than 3.6%. And finally, in the medieval Iranian from Mongolia, you can see about 6.6% Caucasian hunter-gatherer ancestry. So here we have the fits for these models and you can see that they're not the best. Nonetheless, they are acceptable and they range from 3.35 to 3.64. Overall, this analysis on the medieval Iranians proves that they're mostly of Iran calcolithic and Andrano genetic stock. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this phase of the video. In the next phase of the video, I'll be taking a look at modern Iranian populations in light of their Andrano ancestry. 
So here we have the breakdowns for the modern day Iranians. So you can see there on calculated cancer ranges from 65.2 to 81.2%. As for their Andronova ancestry, you can see that it ranges from 16.4% in the Lur to as high as 25.8% in the Iranian Zoroastrian. So you can see that it's a significant part of the genome of these Iranians. Then you can see Caucasian hunter gatherer ancestry only appearing in three of the samples but not exceeding more than 2.6%. Indian hunter gatherer ancestry here peaks at 4.6% in the Laristani. Then you can see minimal East Asian ancestry not exceeding more than 3.2% in the Iranian sample which is interesting so it is minimal then you can see Natufian ancestry being absent in more than half of the samples but nonetheless in the ones that it is present it is not exceed more than 6.8 percent in the Iranian Persians from Shiraz which is interesting and finally the sub-Saharan African component only appears at 0.6 percent in the Laristani which is interesting so with the exception of the Laristani all of these samples have no sub-Saharan African ancestry so what this means is that on a genetic level, unlike their Arab neighbors, the modern Iranians have no sub-Saharan African ancestry. Also what you can see here is that modern day Iranians have significant Andronovo ancestry which is interesting. So what this means is that the Aryans left somewhat of a significant genetic impact on the genome of modern day Iranians. Nonetheless, you can still see that the majority of the ancestry of modern day Iranians comes from an Iran calcolithic source. So here we have the fits for these models and you can see again they're below 2 for the majority of these samples with the exception of course of the Iranian, of the Galak and the Laristani. So with the exception of these three sample sets the remainder of Iranians have very low fit. So what this means is that the models are very much excellent. So moving on we have the Eastern Iranians. So these are the Khorasanis. So you can see there on calcolithic answer ranges from 58.8 to 62.8%. Their Andronova ancestry ranges from 24% to 27.6%. So it is significant here. Their Indian hunter-gatherer ancestry ranges from 4 to 10%. Their Neolithic East Asian ancestry peaks at 8.2%, but is nonetheless below 10 for all of these samples. And finally, their Sub-Saharan African ancestry is absent in three of the samples, with the exception of the Eastern Plateau profile, where it appears at 0.2%. So these Iranians from Khorasan are largely genetically contiguous as these results illustrate. Though it is worth noting that overall they tend to have more stuff as well as more foreign ancestry in the form of Indian hunter-gathering and Neolithic East Asian heritage. Moving on we have the fits for these models so you can see that they're below 2 and that's excellent and they range from 1.11 to 1.78. So overall these models are very much accurate and sound. So up next we have the Iranians from Azad Mard's personal collection. So you can see regarding the Iranians in Azad Mard's personal collection, their on calculated cancer ranges from 67.2 to 82.2%. Their Andronova ancestry here ranges from 15.2 to 24.4%. Their Neolithic East Asian ancestry peaks at 6% in the broadly West Iranian sample. Their Indian hunter-gatherer ancestry here peaks at around 3.4% in the Iranians from Shiraz and then you can also see Laman Natufian ancestry peaking at 5.2% but again being absent in nearly half of the samples you can see a bit of sub-Saharan Bantu ancestry at 0.2% in the Huzi Persian and finally you can see Caucasian hunter gather ancestry appears in two of the samples at 1.6% so yeah overall the Iranians in Azad Mard's personal collection also have a great degree of genetic continuity so here are the fits for these samples and you can see with the exception of one of them they're below 2. So what this means is that these uh, calculations are very much accurate and sound and what this means is that again the Iranians in Azad Mard's personal collection are largely contiguous. Overall what these results on the Iranians after they proved is that they have greater than 90% genetic continuity when taking a look at their raw genetic makeup which is quite interesting and remarkable. So yeah up next I'll be taking a look at the genetic origins of the Kurds. So here we have the breakdowns for the Kurdish populations. So you can see here that the Kurds after they derived the majority of their ancestry from an Iran calcolithic component which ranges from 62.4 to 80%. Then you can see significant Andronomo ancestry ranging from 16.6% in the Faili sample to as high as 23.8% in the Syrian Kurd from al Haska, which is interesting. So what this shows is that the Kurds much like the Iranians also have significant Andronomo ancestry. Then you can see Indian hunter-gatherer ancestry not exceeding more than 4%. Neolithic ancestry from East Asia not 
not exceeding more than 2.8%. And then you have a bit of Natufian acid, you're not exceeding more than 5.8%. And finally, Anatolia Neolithic acid, you're not exceeding more than 8%. So what these results indicate is that the Kurds of today are largely genetically an Iranian population. And what's interesting here is that the peak of the step answer actually comes in the Syrian Kurds, which I find very interesting. Nonetheless, you can see most of these other samples also tend to have a lot of step ancestry. So here we have the fits for the Kurds. So you can see that regarding these models, they're very much excellent and the fits are below two for nearly all of the samples with the exception of the Kurd, Kurdmanji from Iraq. So what's interesting here is that with the exception of those uh, sample sets from Iraq, the remainder have an excellent fit, meaning that these models are very much sound. So overall, these results on the Kurds prove that they're largely genetically an Iranian population and are not some sort of European or some sort of Jewish or even some sort of non-Iranian population living in the Middle East and they're mostly genetically akin to other Iranians. So the final part of this video will take a look at step ancestry in the Azerbaijani population. So what you'll see here is that the Azerbaijanis, unlike the Kurds and the other Iranians, have significant East Asian ancestry as well as significant Anatolian ancestry and a bit of Caucasian hunter-gatherer ancestry as well. Nonetheless, they're still largely akin to other Iranians. So here are the breakdowns for the Azerbaijanis. So you can see they're on calculated ancestry it ranges from 60.8 to as high as 75.6%. Their Androno ancestry here ranges from around about 17.2% to as high as 27.4%, so it is a significant part of their genome. Then regarding their East Asian answer, you can see that it peaks at 7.2% and ranges from around about 2.6% to 7.2%, as mentioned, though nonetheless you can see that it's minimal, meaning that they're not mostly of Turkic genetic stock, and you can see that they actually have more Andrino than Turkic ancestry. So yeah, these results prove an Iranic origin for the Azerbaijanis. Then you can also see ancestry deriving from an Indian hunter-gatherer source not exceeding more than 4% in the Iranian Turkmen, which is interesting. Caucasian hunter-gatherer ancestry peaks at 9.2%, but nonetheless is absent in the majority of these samples. And finally, Anatolia Neolithic ancestry only appears in one of the samples at 7.2%. So what this means is that on a genetic level, the other Iranians of today are largely genetically akin to other Iranians. Another thing to note here is that the Azerbaijanis tend to have no Natufian ancestry, so they largely avoided admixture from Natufian related populations such as the Arabs, which I find very interesting. Finally, we have the fits for these models, and you can see for the majority of these uh, calculations, they're below two, with the exception of one of them being the Azerbaijani from Turkey. So, what this means is that these models are very much excellent and sound. So yeah, overall this analysis took a look at the amount of Andrino ancestry harbored by ancient, medieval and modern day Iranians and proved that there is a great degree of genetic continuity among today's Iranians and also that the Iranians tend to have significant amounts of proto-Indo-Iranian Aryan ancestry which is very interesting and this means that this component played a major role in the ethnogenesis of the Iranians. And as you saw, modern day Iranians are very close to Iron Age as well as medieval Iranians. And another thing to note here is that they maintain around the same step ancestry as the ancient Iron Age Iranians as well as the medieval Iranians, which is interesting. So, what I'd say is that there is indeed a great degree of genetic continuity in Iran at around 90 to 95%, based on this analysis at least. So, yeah, that's essentially it for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.